Okay, final section, data frame functions. Um, this is not all of the important data frame functions, but these are the bare minimum uh, that will keep you afloat when you're first learning about pandas and you're first struggling to do data science. So I feel like I need to tell you these during this intro tutorial. Um, number one, copy. Um, I see this all the time with students that I have. Uh, they'll do something along the lines of um, x equals the data frame. Um, I'm going to set some value of x, so dot lock. Um, uh, let's go ahead and set this index and maybe this row and then just set it equal to negative one. And then later on, when they look back into their data frame, or when they look back into their data frame, whoops, uh, a and two is negative one, whereas maybe you only wanted this for specific x. So you were just doing some side calculation on the side. Um, the way to get around this, do data frame .copy. Um, If you do data frame .copy, this nonsense won't happen. Um, so just be very, very careful with this. This is a super useful command. It's useful for series. It's useful for data frames. Um, just be careful with it. Uh, as type is a really good one too. Um, so this goes ahead and it takes a column and it converts it to a specific type. So for example, we've got float in this column. We can convert it to an integer. Um, this is useful. It's very useful in terms of saving space. Um, this is the number one case where I use this. Super useful in terms of saving space. It is sometimes useful in, in other uh, operations, but it's something that you should really, you should know about. Um, Dataframe.transpose, this is surprisingly useful. So dataframe.transpose, it takes the rows and makes them columns, it takes the columns and makes them rows. Okay, Nate, why is, why is that useful? Well, let's hold on one second. So to visualize your data, generally what people do to get a sense of it is they do a couple of commands. They do df.head, which gives you the first row of the data. Um, df.tail will give you the last row of the data. And df.sample will give you some random stuff in the data. Um, so those are three useful commands to go ahead and do. Um, you can do info. This looks at all of your data frames. It tells you how many are non-null and tells you the data type thereof. It's incredibly useful. Uh, df.describe, it gives you summary statistics of each of these things. Um, so for uh, numeric ones, it will go ahead and give you the mean, standard deviation, all these goodies. For non-numeric ones, it will actually give you, so in this case, it gives you as NANs for these, but for non-numeric ones, it will give you the number of unique, it will give you their frequency and occurring, um, and a couple of other things. So really good to get a handle on the data. Now the problem is, let's say you've got a couple of uh, tens of columns. So in this case, I've got a lot of columns. I've got 19 plus 4, or 20 plus 4, so 24 columns. I can't see all of these columns in my head. Instead, I get this sort of annoying dot, dot, dot uh, notation. Now, you can change the pandas display setting in order to go ahead and better see this. But my favorite way of actually going ahead and see this is taking the transpose of the head. This is super common. You'll see a ton of data scientists doing this, uh, and it's kind of cool. Uh, so again, it looks at the indices right here. So we've got num row number one, row number two, row number three, and then you get all of these columns down here. Um, so you can get you know, basically as many columns as you want. And for us, it's a little bit more intuitive to see the columns like this. So you can see like, okay, my 19 column, it looks like it only has 19s. Or uh, my column five, it looks like it has some NANs and it looks like it has strings otherwise. Um, so data frame uh, dot head dot transpose, pretty useful. And remember, you want to do it in this order, because otherwise you'll transpose the entire data frame and it'll just take longer than needed. The final things that, uh, that you might want to know how to do is that Pandas has some display options. Uh, so display.maxrow, uh, set option precision. This will go ahead and it will change the way things are displayed for you. Uh, so I can go ahead and I can, I can change these and I can display these guys as well. Um, I'm not sure if anything will be shown here, but uh, unfortunately not. But if I go actually up to my series, so if you remember, we had some series from back in the day. Notice I can now um, uh, show up to seven significant figures instead of what we were showing before. Um, I can change the precision to one, basically just get one significant figure. It can make visualizations a little bit nice. Uh, max display rows, it shows the number of rows that you'll display. So in this case, if you have 100 columns and you're doing this data frame dot transpose thing, you can't actually see them until you set the max display rows. Um, you can always limit it, so we can do it to 10, and I'll show you what happens here. You get this sort of dot, dot, dot notation. You can, of course, give max display columns as well. Um, it's just I prefer to look at these things using the head and transpose. Okay, that was a lot of information. Um, 
And uh, you know, one part of me was wondering whether I should have done this or not. Um, just made sort of like an introductory uh, pandas thing because this is not really an introductory pandas tutorial. This is more like I've used pandas before. Uh, it confuses me a little bit. I, and there's so many crazy functions. I don't know which one I should use. Um, but I thought if I'm going to be making a pandas tutorial, I may as well just sort of go with the basics as well. And I know this ended up being sort of a 30 minute tutorial, so you know, my apologies. But hopefully you get to see a little bit of um, the way I think about these things, the way I think about series and data frames, the way I think about operations on them, which operations I think are really important, uh, how speed affects the way that I sort of choose these functions. Uh, and hopefully it gives you a little bit of intuition on, on how to do these things yourself. I know there are so many tutorials that are um, so introductory um, and there are so many tutorials that just sort of give you like the big swath, like here's everything you can do. I really don't want to give you everything you can do. I want to give you the things that I use most commonly. And because I, I do data science quite a lot, I, I do use a lot of these things. Um, uh, so hopefully that will help you. Um, in conclusion, uh, you've got the basics. You should now be able to do the getting and knowing exercises here. Or these are the pandas exercises. Um, please go ahead and do those. Uh, they're really, really helpful. Uh, after you do them, you can go ahead and watch me do them. Um, and uh, I'll go ahead and click or leave a link right up here uh, to sort of show you me going and stumbling through these getting and knowing exercises where I go ahead and go in completely blind and see how far I can get. And hopefully they're not too hard. Uh, so, uh, so anyways, if I can't do them and you do them, then I'd be impressed. Uh, but you'll get to see me, someone who's worked a lot with this sort of stuff and probably has a lot of old and bad habits. Um, but hopefully some good habits uh, do it as well. I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to, uh, or this, uh, yeah, introduction to data structures in the opinionated guide to pandas. Uh, and I'll see you next time for indexing and slicing.